Hey everyone, so today we're gonna talk about something a bit different. Recently I published a book called Getting Things Done. It's about Git and we can talk about it another time, uh, but it got many people asking me about my writing process and how the heck I got to publish a book while being a CTO of a startup and doing all kinds of things. So today what I'm going to share with you is my process of writing in this talk that I call Hacking Your Writing. So this is a book I tried to publish uh, more than a decade ago. It's in Hebrew. It's a fantasy book and it's a full length book around 400 pages, um, fiction, fantasy, and I printed it, actually printed it as you see, and then I printed it again <laughs> and sent those copies in the actual post office and I sent it to multiple publishers um, and I asked them to publish my book. And basically, I either got no responses or responses such as, sorry, but that's not for us. And basically, I think that's what people thought uh, when they received my manuscript. And I learned a lot <laughs> since that experience about how to write. And by that, I don't really mean the linguistic parts of how to phrase yourself or stuff like that, but more about the process of writing. So some of the experience that I've gained since that failure of a book. One was this book. It's a textbook about computer networks, also written in Hebrew, and it was published for free. It's still freely available. I also published a dissertation for my, my master's in linguistics, which was a really, really long document in English, and I think I never wrote anything in Hebrew since that book about computer networks. I got to post many different posts on Free Code Camp, um, which is a community that I really like. And also I create content for Swim. So as the CTO, I create some marketing content and also the doc site that we have for users. Uh, I was responsible for it for a while. And most recently I published the Getting Things Done book. And yeah, I got to do all of that while living uh, my life and doing all kinds of things. And it's, I think, mainly due to a few good habits that I found over the internet mostly and honed over the years. And I'm happy to share with you today. So in this talk, we're gonna talk about how to write effectively. We'll have some practical tools and takeaways. So some are gonna be methods, as in how to approach the process of writing. And some are gonna be VS Code extensions that you can use to make your life easier. Who is it for? Basically anyone who wants to write, but especially for developers. And I'm going to adopt the developer mindset when I talk about writing as I do for myself. So first, a disclaimer, a few things to note before we get started. So it's gonna be a practical talk. It's not gonna be about AI. Now, generative AI is awesome, and there are many generative AI tools to help you in your writing, to brainstorm ideas, to edit your uh, manuscript, and I'm not gonna focus on that at all. I think it's a topic for another talk. Also, obviously, writing a book is different from writing a blog post or, say, a post on social media, and I'm going to share some things that I find to be common, but obviously not everything applies to all kinds of writing. So we'll focus on parts of the writing process. So what is the writing process? Generally, I like to think of it as a process with five stages. The first is ideation, to know basically what you wanna write about in general. Like if you wanna write a fantasy book about something, that's an idea. It could be more concrete than that, obviously. Uh, or to write a book about Git, it's an idea. Then what I want to say which I believe to be the most important part, and we'll talk about it. What do I actually want to say? Then there is the writing part, which is not as important as most people think, probably. Then the editing part, so you edit what you've written, and lastly, publishing. Now, there could be many books written about any of those stages, but today we'll focus on the middle three. So I would assume that you have an idea and publishing is another topic and we'll focus on those parts, what I wanna say, how to write and how to edit effectively. So first, what I wanna say. 
this is the most important part. If you don't know what you want to say, or if you have a not well articulated argument that you want to convey, no matter how well you write it, it won't be interesting to read. And as a reader, and I think most readers would agree, it's much better to read something that is interesting, touching, encouraging, inspirational, and is not as well written and might have some, say, grammatical errors, than write something that is perfectionally laid out linguistically, but that is super boring or just doesn't convey the right message. So the most important part is to actually know what you want to say. And one thing that I'm going to repeat uh, in this talk is that this state, also called the blank canvas state, is the worst state to be in. And most people, when they are faced with a blank canvas and need to write something, basically freak out. There are different ways to freak out, not everyone looks like that, but generally speaking, you don't know how to start and you freeze because you freak out. And we want to avoid that. And there are different ways to avoid that feeling called writer's block. So writer's block is that you don't know what you want to write, so you don't get to writing. And I'm going to provide a few golden tips. The first one is to teach before you write. And by teaching, I actually mean preparing, say, a presentation. You don't really have to teach it to other people. It just needs to be a presentation that you can then use as a tool and imagine as if you were actually teaching it to someone. Why? Why does that really help? Well, it's much, much easier than writing. If I want to write a book about Git, I might start with teaching about Git in a presentation or a series of presentations. If I want to write about writing, I would definitely start with creating a presentation. It's much easier for me, but for almost anyone I ever talked about this with. So it's much, much easier. It takes less time. It's less stressful. And after you do it, writing is so much easier because you know what you want to say. As a bonus, if you actually teach your content, that is give a presentation, for example, and you get feedback from people, you see what they actually learned, what they understood, what they failed to understand from your teaching, you might understand that you want to change something about how you teach. That is how the content is laid. If you want to add another example, if you want to remove some things that weren't as interesting. So if you can teach it and you can improve your message, but it's not a must. What you should do is create a presentation. It really, really helps. And I also have another talk on how to teach and create effective presentations. And I hope to upload that to this channel soon. And then I'll add a link in the description below. And again, personally, I would never write a post about writing before I actually get to create this presentation and talk about it. The second golden tip is to create a mind map with a friend. And there are different researches about what a good mind map is or or how to create one. And basically, I highly recommend The Publication Coach by Daphne Gray Grant. I'll provide a link in the description. She has written lots of very useful resources about writing in general and mind mapping in particular. But basically here, by mind mapping, I mean take a whiteboard or a notebook and a pen or a marker and talk with a friend about what you want to describe. Talking to someone is, again, same trick, much easier than writing. You talk with someone and you fill in the page or the whiteboard and then you know what you want to write about, you know what you want to say, so it's much easier to write. So it's just the same thing, much easier than writing and then it's much easier to write. Also, you can then turn your mind map, which could be like different nodes that come out of this circle in the middle and then I might want to convert this to an outline, a list of bullets as to how my blog post or book would be constructed. We've talked about what I want to say. The two golden tips are either to create a presentation or talk about it with a friend. It could also be a combination of both. At the end of this stage, what you have is an outline, basically a plan on what you want to say. With this outline, you get to write. And this is the important part. You don't start writing before you have that outline. An outline doesn't have to be a list of bullets that is very detailed, not at all. If 
a mind map is enough for you to know what you want to write about and the basic general direction of how you want to structure your document, that's great. Make it as detailed as you need to be able to start writing. Now, while you write, the most important thing is just write. Don't do anything else. And this is again a tip I took from Daphne Gray Grant and I couldn't agree with this more. Some people, when they write, tend to edit every line. So they write something and then they're like, okay, so this wasn't clear enough and they rewrite the line and they rewrite it again. It's the worst thing you can do. Just write, write fast. Get everything out of your head and onto the paper or screen. Do not edit while writing, just write. The goal is, again, to quote Daphne's uh, words here, a crappy first draft. You want a first draft. It doesn't have to be good at all, but it has to be there. You know why? Because editing a first draft is much, much easier than editing a blank page. So we want to get from this blank page, which causes us to feel freaked out and to have a document filled with words that are not 100% coherent, that still need a lot of editing, but they are there. It makes everything much easier. While you write, write. One of the ways to do that is to use something in VS Code called a Zen mode. So I actually like to write in Markdown. And let me show you what my ID looks like when I do that. Okay, so here I have VS Code and I'm going to start a file. It could be a Markdown file. And I could write typing, but if I now do this, which was control K and then Z, I get to what's called Zen mode. As you will notice, there are no extensions here, nothing to block my view, nothing to interrupt. All I do is write. I don't have any other apps open. It's all I do. I want to get out of this doc. Control K, Z, I guess it's Command K, Z for Mac, and you get all of the other VS Code uh, capabilities. So while you write, just write. Don't edit and don't do anything else. If you have annoying plugins, and those plugins could be useful while editing, for example, and I'll talk about it in the editing phase, there is a Grammarly plugin for VS Code. Yes, you can get Grammarly insights right in VS Code. You don't want to do it while writing. Why? Because when you write, you just need to write and not edit. So disable anything that might interrupt you. And while you write, and this is mostly important for those of you who want to write something longer, like a thesis, a long document, or even a book, is to write a little bit every day. Really, just take a few minutes every day and write something. It's so much easier than writing for a long stretch of time every now and then. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I did on this first book that I tried to publish, uh, that fantasy book. It was that I would leave it alone, leave it aside for a while, then get back to it, and then try to write for a few days, and then leave it again, and then get back to it and write for a few days. And it was exhausting. And also the context switch that I felt every time I needed to remind myself of everything in the book till I could get into it, it was really not worth it. Writing a bit every day is super useful. It's easy and it makes you get more words on the page. Basically, if you commit your changes, for example, as I told you, I use Markdown and I do it in a local Git repository. And if I commit, then I can just use a Git log command and then I see how much I've written every day. And this looks like a healthy log. Okay, so you can see here that on April, let's start from the bottom, 23rd, I wrote a bit, and then on April 24th, I wrote a bit in a few different commits, then on April 25th, I wrote a bit, and I missed one day, April 26th, but then on April 27th, I wrote a bit again. So this is basically a healthy log of writing, just a bit every day. So we're done with writing, we had an outline, now we have a crappy first draft that we can then edit. This is the time for editing. This is the time to take all those words that you wrote very fast that are not as coherent and make them the best way possible. So editing and how to hack the editing process. 
First, I highly recommend to edit in focus separate passes. So the first time you pass over your manuscript should be different than the second. And use some tools to help you. Basically, on the first pass. Now you've written a draft. What I suggest is to reverse engineer your true outline. By that I mean, look at what you've actually written and add some comments describing what you actually did. You can write it with headings. So for example, back to VS Code, say you have this document with lots of words, and more words, and another passage here. You're right in that you understand that here you talk about lots of words. So I edit as a markdown heading and here another passage. So I add this on my editing pass. What I get for free in VS Code, so if it's a markdown file and I go to my explorer, I get this as an outline automatically by VS Code. It also works for subheadings, by the way. If I say within lots of words, I have more words and I save it, it will be here. And now you actually, by adding those headings that you don't have to publish in the end, you understand your outline and you see if it makes sense. Does it make sense to start with lots of words and then go to another passage? So you reverse engineer your true outline. You can also use reading time estimates. There are VS Code plugins that when you select a specific part, tell you how much time it's estimated that a reader would spend reading this part. Also in VS Code, you can collapse a section. So here I collapsed this entire section and I selected everything with this, within this section. And there are some extensions and I'll provide some links below that allow you to see the time estimate and also the word count for the selected section. This should be fixed before moving on to the next pass. The next pass is really, really expensive time-wise. So what I want you to focus on on the first pass is to understand your outline and see if there are any issues with it. Maybe you want to expand more about an issue. Maybe you forgot some very important point. Maybe you expanded too much and there is a section that is estimated to take a reader 30 minutes to read, which is way too much than is worth spending on this specific part of the document. So you should fix it before moving on. Then you can also ask for conceptual feedback. Now this is tricky because you would need a reader that is also smart enough to tell you what's good and what's bad about your document without spending their mental energy on correcting your grammar. In this point in time, what you want is feedback on the coherence of your arguments, of how you laid out your ideas, not about how it's articulated. So this would be a good time to share it with friends or readers that you trust to provide this kind of judgment. And again, it's hard to find them. It's a bonus. After that, we got to pass two. Pass two is the time for your perfectionist to kick in. At this point, you can unleash your grammar monster and really hone every sentence. What you want to do there is use some automatic tools. So as I mentioned, there is a plugin for VS Code called Grammarly. You can also use it for free on say Google Docs or whatever other editor you like that helps you with finding grammatical issues that you might not be aware of. I am not a native speaker of English and sometimes Grammarly helps me find say a preposition that I used incorrectly. And also for native speakers, I know that it really helps to find all kinds of mistakes that they might have made unknowingly. Another useful plugin that is worth mentioning here is called Veil. Vale. Veil vale is like a linter, like you might be used to when writing in a programming language. It's a linter for prose. So for example, you can say, make sure that you start every sentence with a capital letter, but within quotation marks, don't do that. Or you can say, don't use a passive voice, which I don't really feel is a really good advice, but that's for another issue. So basically you can state all kinds of styling guide things that you want to make sure are consistent. For example, you can say that all of the, your headings should adhere to a specific writing convention, like a title convention. So you can state whether all words have to be capitalized or maybe prepositions don't have to be capitalized. Whatever you choose, you want it to be consistent perhaps across your writing. So you can configure that in Veil. Vale. 
So, what did we get to so far? We started by understanding what we wanted to say with two golden tips. One was to create a presentation, the other was to brainstorm mind map with a friend. Then we talked about writing, uh, where my main message was just write and don't do anything else. And then we talked about editing in two separate passes. The first one is to understand how good the message is, if it's well structured, and the other is more about honing the linguistic elements. Going pro. If you want to take this even a step further, then basically one thing you can do is to read actively. And by actively, I mean when you read something like a book someone else has written, think for yourself all the time. What do you like and what do you dislike about this author's writing? What do you find confusing? What's interesting or intriguing? And you can learn from it by watching others carefully and see how they write. There are also some books I can recommend and I created an open source Git repository with links to some of those books that are either about writing or the process of creative work in general. So here is the link and I'll also provide it in the description below. Basically, it has a readme file with the VS Code plugins that I mentioned and also other resources I recommend like books and a wonderful website by Daphne Gray Grant that I mentioned a few times. So the main takeaways. Know what you want to say. It's the most important part. It's way more important than the actual writing and even the editing. Avoid writer's block. So avoid writer's block would basically want to bypass the state where you stare at a blank canvas. There are mainly two ways to do that. One is to teach, either actually teach it to people or create a presentation to teach yourself. And the second one is mind map with a friend. Then write a bit every day, rather than in long stretches of time. While you write, just write. Don't edit, don't allow any distractions, just focus on writing. Use the Zen mode. And then edit in two passes. The first one is the logical pass. The second one is the grammatical linguistic pass where you want to make sure everything is well articulated. I hope you've learned from this presentation. Let me know what you think. Do you have other tips about writing? Just let me know in the comments below. Thank you and I'll 